So I chose to do this presentation on the effect of water pollution on river otters or the Lontracanadensis as it's known taxonomically. So to start out, we'll do a quick river otter background. Um, they live in freshwater environments, primarily rivers, lakes, and streams. And they're actually the apex predators of their ecosystems, which is kind of strange because if you look at this picture, like you wouldn't expect that an otter would be the apex predator. So I kind of found that interesting as I went through some research. And otters are obligate piscivores, which means that they exclusively eat fish and they have high metabolisms. So they have to eat a lot to maintain that high metabolic engine, which is something that we recently just covered in class. So it was kind of interesting to see that play a role too. Um, next, the environmental pollution of fresh water. So human interactions, obviously, like we have wrecked the environment and they have led to pollution. So the main way that the fresh water has been affected is through industry and the coal mining uh, pollution that you see. And so the fresh water has been acidified through the release of this carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and mercury levels are the same way. It's a direct result of this industrial and coal mining pollution that has led to the rising mercury levels in fresh water. And so sort of over here, I've included this mercury cycle image where it shows that it's pumped up into the atmosphere and then eventually it makes its way back through into the water systems before ultimately it becomes bioaccumulated in food webs. So what effect does mercury actually have on otters? Well, first of all, mercury is toxic. Um, it's not good for you. Obviously, it can lead to all sorts of issues. And strangely, it actually damages the neurology components similarly to how it does in humans. And it's kind of strange to me because it not only happens across just otters and humans, but all mammals. And it does so as an endocrine disruptor, which means that it's going to disrupt the hormonal systems of the body. And this can lead to anorexia and neural necrosis which neural necrosis is actually when the neurons uh, prematurely lice, the, like, lice themselves and commit cell death. And ultimately, worst case scenario, mercury can lead to death. So just how bad are the mercury levels in otters? Well, to begin, I think it's important that we understand that not all forms of mercury get biomagnified. It's only methylmercury or the organic form that gets biomagnified. And I included this image to show just how it makes its way from the lowest organism in the food web all the way up until eventually when you get to these apex predators, the amount of mercury in these apex predators is really, really concentrated. And in addition to just otters and other animals, you see that humans are included too because we also eat fish. So <laughs> as important as this is to care about the other organisms and the otters, this can eventually I mean, negatively affect humans too. And so some of the research that's been done has shown that as the mercury concentration levels start to reach over 16 micrograms per gram of fur weight, that cortisol levels actually become lowered in the otters. And that's included this figure that came from this research where it shows you can see once it hits the threshold, it starts to really have this strong negative correlation between the mercury levels and the cortisol levels. And since cortisol is a steroid hormone, um, it's important for metabolism and immune response to, do, to deal with stress. It, it's important that those levels are maintained and are not affected for the body to function properly, which you can see is happening here. Uh, to continue on, so this top one is actually talking about dopamine, but the p-value is not low enough for them to consider this significant, but they did find a correlation between the organic or methylmercury levels and the receptor density for dopamine. So as the organic or methylmercury levels begin to increase, the dopamine receptor levels start to go down. And since dopamine is the neurotransmitter associated with like rewarding in the body, it's important that that gets maintained for you know, mental aspects. And then here on the bottom, they found a very, very strong correlation 
between the methyl mercury levels and the receptor density and affinity of acetylcholine. And so acetylcholine is the primary neurotransmitter of the parasympathetic nervous system, which is sort of our rest and digest mechanism in the body. And so clearly this is going to lead to issues if as you start to have higher mercury levels, the affinity and just total number of receptors for acetylcholine begins to go down, that's going to lead to issues in our nervous system, and it's what's seen in the otters. So the main takeaways from this is that environmental pollution is increasing the mercury levels in water, which should be no surprise. I mean, human impact has been terrible on the environment. And then you begin to see that otters also have increasing mercury levels through this biomagnification that takes place. And it's in no small part due to the fact that they are obligate piscivores, which is why I chose to include this image. And then the otter hormone levels are and receptors are being damaged by mercury. I mean, the results are showing it. The research has been proven that they are being affected by this. And their acetylcholine and cortisol levels have been significantly affected. And the dopamine levels, I mean, they've begun to find correlations, but it's not been strong enough yet that they've classified it as significant. But measures have to be taken to prevent this from increasing any further. Because, like I mentioned earlier in this, it's not just otters that are being affected. This is issues that also affect humans since it's been proven that humans and uh, otters and all sorts of mammals all sort of have the same negative effects associated with mercury. So it's a big reason why there has been so much research done on this to figure out what's going on with the mercury levels in these otters is because ultimately it can lead back to affect us as humans due to us consuming fish. And to wrap things up, this is just my literature cited section, and I just wanted to point out real fast that although this does say 2021 on it, which I know is kind of strange, um, it's because this is planning to be published in this like journal in January of 2021. So although we're not quite in 2021 yet, this, uh, this research is really, really new, and uh, I thought that it ended up being kind of a cool article once I got to read through, so... That, uh, that does my presentation.